finish it here. That's the key issue when it comes to trophy hunting. We're not going back to the dark old days. We're going to end this. And we're going to end it because we're caring compassion for the modern, civilised world in which we live. Now, there's a very important angle that we must remember because we talk a lot about what the UK government can do, but there's a huge amount of discussion and debate in the European Union about trophy hunting. And we've got Jean Lambert today, Green MEP from the European Parliament, is going to come and tell us from her perspective what is going on in terms of the discussion and debate in Europe and how important it is to get real discussions and agreements between the member states to bring this trophy hunting horror to an end. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for the invitation to, to be here. It's a really important event and as you were just hearing, there's some important movements going on in other countries as well. Back a couple of years ago, just before the, uh, maybe genuinely the last European elections in 2014, the European Parliament put through a resolution on wildlife crime. And as we were hearing, wildlife crime is now up there with the big illegal trade, drugs, human trafficking. It shouldn't be there. We need to end all of those problems. But it's a huge trade wildlife crime. And one of the things that was said in that resolution, which was the view of the whole parliament, and I'll come back to that in a moment, is that one of the biggest, you know, we need to recognize the damage that unsustainable, unethical trophy hunting has in terms of the decline of endangered species. We urge national governments to support legal provisions to outlaw this crime and to stop permits for hunting of trophies. We picked it up again in the question about can hunting, where you don't even have an alibi of culling sick, old animals or trying to find some sort of ecological balance. Can hunting is breeding animals for sport for people to take shots at, not only with rifles, but bows and arrows and anything else that they want to do. You know, which is a, such a cynical, outrageous practice. And I know that many people were really, really upset at the expert group that said, well, okay, we can carry on giving hunting trophy permits for lions killed in some parts of Africa still. And that's a battle and an argument that we need to win. The Parliament has kept this issue moving and it's across political groups. The last sort of written declaration, it's like an early day motion in the European Parliament was put together. Nina Gill, a, a Labour Party colleague, fronted that. It was supported by political groups. It got well over 100 signatures calling for a ban on trophy hunting imports. I've been reading since then that the European sort of hunters lobby is claiming the fact that it only got over 100 signatures, not a majority of the parliament, as a triumph for them. They are saying that this means that the European parliament supports trophy hunting and supports the import of trophies. 
saying that they would take action back home to get this stopped. And that's what matters. It's the number of people who are willing to move this forward, the people who were willing to put their names on the line. And people sign, don't sign these declarations for all sorts of reasons, not because they support the opposite of what's on the paper. That, as I say, is a total lie. <laughs> we had another uh, word for it, which, yeah. Don't worry, so they take it, it's great for Thessalus, from a beer, you know? Which, you like. <laughs> yeah, you can get arrested for that sort of stuff, and then you can't be as politically active. Arrest, arrest the trophy hunter. Okay, so, yeah, arrest the trophy hunter. Absolutely. Make it a crime. Yay. So, therefore, what's just happened in the Netherlands, with the Dutch government saying they're going to move forward and ban the imports of trophies, I think is brilliant. They, at the moment, yes, big shout to the Netherlands. They, at the moment, chair the council, the leadership, the, the 28 governments of the European Union together. Therefore, their move is really important. But as we're hearing, they've added to France, and I think we should be pushing for all other governments to sign up to make a unilateral ban, but also to work cross-border, that we ban this at the European level. No loopholes in this. And I think we can do that. But we're looking, you know, there's the action plan on wildlife crime that's coming forward where we can be really active on that and ask for much stronger legislation and legislation that actually will be implemented because that's often the, for the problem. It's there on the books, but it's not implemented. To really end this, Part of the whole strategy is you reduce demand, therefore ban the trophies. Don't make it a glorious thing for some people to, instead of having the beautiful photos that we have here on their wall, to actually have you know, the, the skulls of slaughtered creatures. So, we're hearing some names to add to the list. So there is hope here. There is action that can be made. We should also be urging our government to follow the Dutch example, but to make sure we ban this across those 28 countries so there's a really strong voice later in the year when we're talking about CITES again in Vietnam to really push this on an international level and have a bit of moral high ground, at least on this issue. Thank you. Thank you.